Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on y'all. Hope that everybody is having a pretty decent day and also are experiencing a pretty decent week. Uh, I'm dropping in on you uh, to talk about a very obvious topic right now um, and hopefully to shed light on uh, some things as I do so. I want to remind you guys to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. Um, and beyond, I want to remind you uh, that book number 22 is actually officially released and available by order directly from me or on Amazon. In a couple of more weeks, it'll be at Kobo, Sony, Barnes and Nobles, and so forth. But you can get it on Amazon um, and ship directly to you, or you can order from me and uh, receive a signed copy. Uh, either way, what works best for you. You can also order the bundle uh, where you get Barn in Captivity and the new book, which is The Undoing of the African American Mind, an introduction to cognitive, collective cognitive bias, a reality syndrome. Uh, and we talk about a lot in this book, but we also talk about how we intervene. Uh, I think it's important to understand methods of intervention, solutions, and opportunities and alternatives. And that's what I've spent my life developing and offering. So definitely uh, look at, look in the description box of this video, hit the link, go do what you do. Uh, also, don't forget to so show your support for the work we're doing in the community. Now moving on. Well, everybody's talking today about the fact that Joe Biden has selected Kamala Harris as his running mate for November's election for president. Um, and both sides are weighing in on it. You got the Democrat loyals who vote Democrat no matter what, and they're going in and they're talking about how awesome it is. You got others who are saying uh, it's the same old, same old, others who are pulling receipts. And neither one of them have stellar receipts when it comes to the black community. Uh, but they've been able to get by as most Democrats simply by being a Democrat. And now you have a Democrat who many see as black, although she has never identified as black, except for when it was beneficial to her. Uh, Kamala Harris was sworn in uh, in her first time elect being elected to the Senate as the first Indian American senator first Indian American female senator, not African American, not black, Indian American. That's what she decided she wanted to identify with. Her actions over the years have shown that she does not identify with black. She does not represent black interests. She broke the record for incarcerating black men during her time in office as a state attorney and the attorney general of California. During her bid uh, and campaign of becoming the uh, Democratic nominee. She didn't even lead in her state of California in any polls. Uh, she has a record that speaks for itself. So I don't want to focus so much on her or Joe Biden as in as much as the mindset of black people. Look, in 1963, the Civil Rights uh, Bill was passed. A part of that bill was voter rights that should have automatically been the right of black citizens based on the 13th Amendment, 13th and 14th Amendments. However, due to uh, reconstruction in the South, a lot of states, especially Alabama, Mississippi, a few more, were impeding the rights of blacks to vote and thereby the need for an, uh, an amendment or a bill that comes in and says, okay, blacks have a right, something that has to actually be recertified every so often, it periodically has to be recertified. It's not an amendment that provides an unexpiring right, and we literally have to be given the right to vote periodically. I forget what the time frame is, uh, but it has to be read up. But anyway, since then, when you trace the progress or the lack thereof of the black community, what you find is that we have not made any ground 
whatsoever. In fact, we have actually regressed when it comes to our progress. We're at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder in almost every measurable category. And that is because we have not gained ground by voting. We have been voting since we, uh, let's just say since 1963, nearly 30 years. I mean, excuse me, nearly 60 years. We've been voting. And we are actually in a worse situation socioeconomically. We're in a worse situation when it comes to the wealth gap. We're in a worse situation when it comes to uh, the current state of the black, black family nucleus. We are in a uh, conundrum when it comes to mass incarceration. Uh, we have found ourselves in quite uh, an enigmatic uh, situation. And it has happened under both Republican and Democrats. Uh, so Republicans and Democrats. So uh, regardless of whose administration we existed under, we've gained no ground. We've saw no advantages. There have been no benefits to our votes on a federal and national level. We must be able to evaluate uh, the data. We must be able to look at and track where we are must be able to understand. We must stop engaging our reality from a place of emotion. We cannot have so much hate for one person that we ignore the fallibilities and faults of another. There's no such thing as winning by voting for the lesser of two evils. Evil is evil. Wrong is wrong. Bad is bad. How they do it to you should be irrelevant to you. What you should be doing is focusing on what you're going to do about your situation. It is time out believing that we can vote our way out of our dilemma. We cannot vote our way out of poverty. We cannot vote our way out of gentrification. We cannot vote our way out of miseducation. We cannot vote our way out of mass incarceration. We cannot vote our way into a winning situation within a system that was designed to have us in last place and those who designed it to benefit from that, from that situation. They are never going to allow you to get in a situation where their representation of you actually represents your best interest, when in fact it would be the demise of their own uh, their own self-preservation. So what me, we must then understand is while there are some ways that you can leverage the vote, the idea of voting someone into the White House that's going to be the grand master of our salvation is absolutely fruit. Uh, Fruit, futile and it makes absolutely no sense from a logical and reasonable perspective. The bottom line is that Vassal seat is meant to serve the white elite, the wealthy elite. It is not meant to empower the powerless. It never has been and it never will be. Those who actually set up and choose who will be in that seat will not allow it. Now, what does that mean for us? So let's start looking at things. I don't like Donald Trump. And this is the part that I want to get to. I don't like Donald Trump. I don't like Kamala Harris. I definitely don't like Joe Biden. By saying I don't like Joe Biden about calling Kamala Harris on her past and her record as a, a, a district attorney, as the attorney general, as a senator, it does not by any means and in any way say that I endorse or I support Trump. I can actually not like any of them. You actually have that right. It's amazing to me how much we have moved into a situation and been conditioned to believe that we have an either or choice when it comes to the election. We actually don't, but because we don't understand it and because we're guilty into voting for somebody we take, okay, who's the lesser of two evils? Have you ever thought about it? Some of us have actually taken that thinking into selecting a mate. Some of us have actually taken the idea that as long as the person isn't bad as the last person, I'm winning, and then end up in a situation where you get screwed. Okay, you was with a person that cheated on you. You was a person that, that, that physically and emotionally abused you. You was a person that downgraded you and dismissed you. And so now you got a person that talks nice to you that you meet 
but they have a history of slashing uh, their ex's tires. They have a history of sharing their their ex's business and putting them in, in bad situations, but they are nicer and whatever. And you actually say, okay, that's a win. No, that's just another way that you're going to have to suffer and struggle with things that are going on with you and your mate. You should be looking for a person that measures up to the standards of what you consider an ideal mate. They should be nice. They should be respectful. They should be considerate. They should hold you in high regard. They should never, ever discuss uh, your business or dismiss you. They should never, ever put you in a situation that makes you vulnerable. Those are not negotiable and you don't take anyone less than that. That's the same way you should be looking at how you are uh, choosing someone who is going to represent at the highest level your government. You sit up and say they need to have A, Y, I mean, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They need to have these things. If they don't have it, they don't get my vote. And what you have to understand is there is a situation where your vote is valuable because of how you handle it. If you are automatically in a position where you feel you have to give it away, you're already losing. Why? Because you are going to be given two options by the government. You got the right wing, the Republicans, the left wing, the Democrats, but them two damn wings belong to the same bird. That bird has been shitting on you and your ancestors since 1619 and has not stopped. Same damn bird, different ways of traveling by pool whether it's pulled to the conservative side, pulled to the liberal side, it's still dumping on you, has given you no pathway to collective success and collective empowerment, and yet you still believe that one side is better than the other because they say so and they talk a different way and, they, and, and they're not as direct with the way they handle you, but at the end of the day, you're still screwed because when you look at the numbers, you haven't gained any ground. Whether, and see, that's the thing. That's why you have to be outside of your feelings. Why? Because your feelings will tell you things are better. Feel, your feelings will tell you that the eight years of Obama was just great for black people when the truth are we lost wealth during the time that Obama was in office. That's what I'm talking about. Be able to literally sit down and look at extant data, be able to process that data, be able to make a decision, not based on your feelings, not based on your emotions, but based on the facts, based on what is the best possible outcome. And sometimes, no matter what the bull crap they've been shooting you about your ancestors died so that you can have a right to vote. Actually, they did not. We had the right to vote, the vast majority of us, from the time the 13th Amendment was drafted. Those few that didn't have a right to vote, you were marching in Alabama and Mississippi, things of that nature, for the right to vote, understood the importance of the vote. And the vote only becomes valuable if you control it. You don't control the vote if you only have two choices. You don't control the vote if you only think the two parties are the only way to go. You control the vote because you control your vote when you have the ability to throw a wrench in the status quo by voting for someone who is not a Democrat or a Republican or by withholding your vote. It's the same way thing with money. We have the same mindset with our money as we have with our vote. We got to spend it on something or it's going to burn a hole in our pocket. We never think to invest it in something long term. We never think to invest it in something that has uh, uh, an appreciative value. We never, ever sit down and think, maybe I just need to hold on to it until something of true value comes along that's worth me spending it on. And we suffer for it in the way of socioeconomic status, in the way of uh, our economic positioning, in the, in, in the level of poverty we experience. It is so important that we get out of our feelings. I'm not telling you who you should vote for. I'm telling you that if you're voting for Kamala Harris and Joe Biden because they're Democrats or because Joe Biden selected a woman who has, although she doesn't claim it, uh, some blackness in her, uh, though you can't tell it by her decision. She married white. She birthed white. She acts and votes white. She chose her Indian heritage over her black heritage when she was sworn in as a U.S. senator. She's shown you over and over again that she does not identify with you at the rate. Let me tell you something in researching Kamala Harris. And then I'm going to get, get off of here and I'll have to come back and do a live with you guys later on. And we're going to talk about this more. So I'm going to challenge you to do your research before then. Look, in researching Kamala, two things st stood out to me was her stance on legalizing marijuana. And I'll tell you why in a minute. And her stance on releasing nonviolent offenders. 
her stance on legalizing marijuana. She fought the legalization of marijuana in California until it just simply became politically detrimental to her. She fought it and she made this clear because the people who were being jailed and imprisoned off of uh, crimes associated with marijuana were facilitating the free labor that makes the state so much money. Okay, same thing was said when it came to releasing nonviolent offenders. Who's going to fill the positions and beds in those prisons that equate to money that is being made through the free labor? And this is within the last 20 years that this stuff has been done and said. So you have in one, on one hand, Joe Biden running for president who for four, over the past 40 years has done nothing but push legislation that has set black people back. Way before the crime bill of 1994, back in the 70s, he was pushing bills blocking busing that would have gave better educational opportunities to young black kids. He was sitting up talking about uh, a racial jungle that would not be right for his kids in integration. He fought integration tooth and nail. Uh, not that we should have been pushing for integration, but the idea that he thinks his kids are better than our kids says a lot about who he is and where he's at. He's talked about the fact that he doesn't care how long uh, the people who get in prison stay in prison. That's what they need to be. He would like for them to stay the whole 100%. Regardless of rehabilitation, he's not worried about rehabilitating them. That's his statement. So you got this guy who comes up with all this legislation that leads to mass incarceration and puts a very minor, very uh, small minority, blacks, as a majority in the prison system. Blacks make up the largest majority in the prison system, close to 40%. Or may even be 40% by now, but 39 point something percent over whites, while they are definitely the predominant uh, population in this culture, make up less, like 33, 32, 33%. This is not an accident. Kamala Harris comes along, takes those very laws at, that, that uh, Biden authored, and uses them to incarcerate a record number of black men in California. So, that's what you've got to be aware of. That's what you've got to understand. That's what you have to use. Do your research. Am I endorsing uh, Trump? Absolutely not. But with Trump, I know what I get. And with Biden and, and Kamala Harris, I know what I get. I don't have to give any of them my support. But if I had to choose and who I'm going to deal with, I would probably say I'll take another four years of this asshole before I sit up and go vote the dude in that I know screwed my people. While I don't like Trump, just on a personal level, I can't go through and find policies that specifically harm my people that he's enacted. Uh, matter of fact, he's taken some steps to, to actually right some wrongs against some of my people. I don't trust him still. I'm not gonna support him. But what I'm sitting up saying is, you gotta do it with 40 years. Of, of, of a history of just sticking it to you and smiling in your face and saying I need your vote and then the audacity and the arrogance to sit up and tell you if you don't vote for him you're not black the audacity to feel he has the right to define your blackness I mean that goes to the arrogance that Democrats have when it comes to blacks because they believe they got you in, your, in their pocket already they're not even trying to do anything look if you don't vote for me you ain't black forget if you vote for me, this is what I'm going to give you. See the difference? They are used to manipulating you. They are used to playing scare tactics. They are used to playing. Are you Republican now? Because in that would that in 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 the political world for blacks, that's considered an insult. I don't vote my as the 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 the, the actual theme of blacks is I don't vote my interests. I vote party along party lines, whether it's my interests or not. So I'm going to make sure everybody in the world knows I'm voting Democrat, even though Democrats have given me jack crap and actually have played the role in my detriment more than I would like to admit. It was the Democrats who put in social programs in the 60s that started the disintegration and disruption of the black family nucleus. Not Republicans. That was under the Johnson administration. That was after a warning in 1965 from a social report written by Daniel Patrick Monahan, known affectionately as the Monahan Report, but officially labeled the, the Negro family a case for national ant, uh, action. Uh, it was all laid out what would happen, and they knew it because it was set out for them, and they still chose that route. 
I wonder why. We have to ask ourselves those questions. We have to be willing to probe. We have to be willing to be honest with ourselves and admit how much of what we're going through is actually on us because we simply refuse to take action. We keep waiting on a, someone else to jump into a position as savior and rescue us instead of us taking action on our own. There's a lot to be looked at and a lot to be viewed, but what we cannot do, it can't, you can't, the reason you're voting for anybody can't be just because they're black. We've seen plenty of black faces in high places that have produced absolute nothing. In fact, many of them have actually caused more harm than good. So we cannot use that as a standard. That's a very poor standard. What are you putting on the table? What are you bringing to me that says I should give you my vote? How can I hold you accountable? How can I measure it? Is it measurable? Can I sit up and look at you six months from now saying you promised this and show you where you're at in the progression of what you promised me? All of these are things that you should be able to understand as a voter as a collective group and if you don't that's why you've been screwed so this is what we're going to do from now on is we are going to sit down and we're going to actually think i'm going to do everything i can to get you much as much information as i possibly can look on that note i'm gonna get off here i've arrived at my first stop i've got to get off and get some things done but i definitely plan on getting back to you asap to do this live so stay tuned. Don't forget, support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project. Don't forget to get book number 22. On that note, I'm out of here.